let's take a look at what each type of user needs. So let's look at what beginners need. One thing to remember, when you are designing a piece of software, good software shortens the passage from beginners to intermediates. Because remember, what happens with beginners? What are the two things that we discussed a few minutes ago about when a, a beginner is using your product? One of two things happens. What are those two things? Either they become intermediates, or what's the other option that we don't want? They give, they give up, and they abandon the product. So in order to really help your, your beginners, you want to provide tools and those sorts of things that help them become intermediates in a process that is as painless to them as possible. So we want to remember that our users do tend to be intelligent. So beginners do need some instruction, but they don't need a whole lot of instruction. It doesn't have to be as in your face as, as Clippy, for example, which can be just outright annoying. So the process has to be fairly rapid and very targeted. And as you'll find, it's also something that you want to be able to turn off. So here's another axiom. Imagine users as very intelligent, but very busy. I know with students, you all can definitely relate. Since you have all of this time, all, free, all this free time, right? All right. So intelligent people always learn better when they understand cause and effect. So they need to understand what the purpose of the product is, as well as when I do this, what happens? So new users need to grasp the con concepts and scope of a product quickly, or that user will abandon it. Why do I want to use this product? How is it going to help me? What can I do with this product? How easy is it going to be to use? So as a reminder with our, from our previous lectures, ensure that the product adequately reflects the user's mental model of his tasks. And I would expand this to the mental model of the user's goals. What do they want to accomplish? Do you remember what we said about the user's mental model and the represented model? To have a better interface, what do we want to do with our represented model? This is a great test question. Anyone? No? OK, you guys have to study better. You want to remember. You want the represented model to be as close to the user's mental model as possible because it makes the system easier to use. Do you remember what the rep represented model is? I'm getting some nods and no answers. It's basically the face of your product and how it represents itself to the world. So beginners do require help from the product. But remember, that help very often interferes once they become intermediates. So that's a problem, right? What are some things you think we can do about that? You can turn stuff off. You want to provide them with the ability to turn stuff off. So early hand-holding must be removable. But you want, do want your users to have that early hand-holding. Now, one of the things that a lot of people think is, well, users are going to go and use the online help, especially these beginners. If they, when they're learning something, they're going to go whip out either, you know, the manual, which these days, of course, is online help. They're going to reach through it, and they're going to learn how to use the product, right? How many of you think that's true? OK, how many of you do that? None of you, I can see, you're just like me. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, beginners tend not to use online help. They tend not to go through and start reading step by step on how to do things. 
at least not until they get to a certain point. So standard online help is a poor tool for beginners. So what are some things that, that do work well for beginners? Well, wizards and dialogue boxes that convey the overview, scope, and purpose of the product are better. But do you think this can become irritating and annoying to your perpetual intermediates? Yes. So what do we want to be able to do? Turn it off. So make sure you have a cancel button. Sounds obvious, right? How many times have you seen that that's not available? because we forget. Another thing that beginners rely on a great deal that actually tends to surprise certain developers is that beginners rely heavily on menus to learn and execute commands. When research has been done with beginners, what they find is that they look at their interface, they take their mouse, they start basically looking at all of the different menus and seeing what can be done in each of those menus. They really do spend a good amount of time exploring those menus and using those menus to be able to grasp as quickly as they can what they can do with this product and to give them a general idea of where they do find various commands. So you want your menus to be thorough and relatively verbose. So you want to make sure that as much as possible you use terminology that is going to help give the user information about what they can do. Now in doing this of course you want to remember also consistency. So one example that we talked about earlier in the semester was save as which makes sense to us, right? In fact, you're actually renaming something, so why not call it rename? Well, in this case, because of consistency, that's why we keep seeing it as save as. They also rely a great deal on dialogue boxes. So dialogue boxes should be briefly explanatory. Now remember, they need to be brief, they need to be without technical jargon. Because in fact, with beginners, what you find that they do is that when they get a dialogue box, they really do read the what's, what's in the dialogue box. They tend to read it a little bit slower, and they try to make sure that they understand what's being said. Now, do you think that most inter in intermediates tend to do this? What do they usually do? Like, you're lucky if they even read it. 